All right, we are coming back strong. Wait, are you recording this? Yeah. Is this thing on? It Hello. Is on. <laughs> I don't know why, but when I first started my voice, I almost wanted to be like, you know, uh, we'll call it DADV Radio. I'm DJ Dad. And I'm DJ Daughter. Welcome to the Top 10 Countdown of this week's music. I don't know. I don't know why. Hello. Yeah, I, <laughs> I felt can do like a radio a, announcer. I felt like a radio DJ. Anyway, we're back. Do we? We never went anywhere. You missed no. us, probably. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know how our, uh, we don't know how our listeners feel unless you leave us a I comment. Love- yeah, yeah. <laughs> please tell us if you missed us in the comments, please. Yes. Um, last week on uh, Dad Ventures, things got a little explosive, and uh, and uh, acid adjacent, and they did, <laughs> and um, we found ourselves with Beryl and Kia and Greta and Flibbit escaping Briarport, an escapade again, again. What do you mean again? I scraped last oh, time. Oh, you did, you did. Now I actually no. That now doesn't you just work. escaped. <laughs> now I just escaped. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully, everybody's enjoying the show. We're trying to get more listeners. We're trying to get more reviews. Uh, podcasts kind of succeed by whether or not people actually review and listen and follow us and all that sort of stuff. So, check us out if you're enjoying the show. If this is your first time listening. I'm sorry. Uh, (laughs) This is not one of our recap days. (laughs) No, it's not. Uh, But we will keep doing those. That was a good one. Uh, Wow. So, last time, you guys had to escape Briarport. Barrel had caused this huge distraction with an explosion of Bloodhound shipment, and it forced you guys to get on the airship and fly back west. West. On the way, you had a conversation on the Rocky Talkie with Gunther, and uh, he informed you that he was going to have a little device for you when you get back. A motor wheeler? He is called that it a moto wheeler. A moto wheeler. <laughs> yeah, and we'll talk about that when you get there. But in the meantime, that uh, him and Theodore were going to be doing an experiment tomorrow mm. about trying to control a storm in some some way, try to move it, see if they can figure that out. So they're working together with various surged tech items to see if they can exert some sort of control over the wild magic storms. You guys also decided that you were going to go back to Retail Ruins to pick up the lamp to keep going with my contract surged items for your contract. That's what Theodora would want. You also realized in all of your discovery that you don't think Maud was captured. You don't think she was injured. You're not sure entirely. But there have been signs pointing you to the city of Athon. Or, what is it, Wander Wharf? Wander Wharf. Now, you and Beryl decided that you would split up. You would head to Athon, and Beryl was going to head towards a Wander Wharf, where she was going to meet up with Harwick Thistle, the third member of their team, Beryl, Maud, and Harwick. And mayor of Wander yes, Wharf. Yes, he was the mayor <laughs> of Wander Wharf. So, so you guys basically discussed doing this, getting you back to Map's Edge, and then parting ways until you can meet at Wander Wharf later. And I am on a very secret spy mission that will hopefully only last 10 minutes. Yeah, you decided that you guys were going to sneak into the old retail ruins Kia warehouse (laughs) and uh, you decided that Beryl would provide a distraction by baiting them fishing pole style with a stink clock on a enchanted ball of yarn. <laughs> and you would sneak down through the roof of this building. Done. 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 Now, last week you surprised me because I definitely thought that you were going to just like climb down on a rope, grab the clock or and the lamp, maybe try to sneak in the front door because it was so close to the front. But no, 
the daughter decides <gasps> instead she's going through the roof. <laughs> I love it. Because this comes from recently watching several detective movies. <laughs> okay, okay. So you're going stealth. You told Flibbit to stay behind, and right before you left, he cast on you a 10-minute uh, telekinetic shield, we're calling it, which is a plus two to your AC for 10 minutes. I will be very hard to hit. You will be hard to hit. And you also have a little bit of a time limit in terms of if you want that spell to last. Mm-hmm. That's where we are now. It is nighttime. It is dark. Quiet here, too. Super quiet. After this explosion and flying through the air and having that muffled kind of like wind past your face, getting off the rope, sitting there, listening to it, all you can really hear is the little chittering of those surge scarabs down front and your breathing. Okay. The, f the roof of this structure, there's a hatch. It's also torn up. There's probably a bunch of like holes looking mm -hmm. through too. Nothing that you could fit through. Oh. But it's pretty beat up. I think I I go over to one of the th to the nearest hole. Okay, there's one near the hatch anyway, and you peer in. Go ahead and make a perception check. Ooh, 19. 19. You peer down and I think you're caught off guard a little bit because you are looking down into your old cat bedroom. Oh. And that hatch would lead down to like a hallway right outside that flashback episode slash memory of yours now from before you were Kia the Tabaxi. And you see a little cushion by a window. <laughs> you see some bones in the corner. And you also see that the place is like ransacked. Oh. It's been seven years. Yeah. It's totally torn apart, but there are aspects of it that are the same. I think I absentmindedly finger the little uh, stri uh, the piece of blue thread on my wrist. Remembering that flashback. Yeah, the one that Gunther tied around like a bracelet? Yeah. Nice. And I think I go over and go... Wait, is the is the hatch locked? No. Well, there's no lock on this side. Okay. I think I, I go in, I go over Take a deep breath and then go. And try to open the hatch. Unfortunately, that's about the sound that it does start making. But can you go ahead and make me a stealth check? 14? 14, okay. You're able to kind of slowly do it. You pause. You slowly do it. You pause. You kind of make that screeching not sound so loud by going really slowly. It still makes noise, but it's less so. Mm -hmm. So you creak the hatch open. And you are able to finally get it all the way open. You see down, it's dark inside. No light. Mm -hmm. Except for, you know, any sort of moonlight coming through, things like that. I can see, though. You can see, but remember, gotcha. something to remember with dark vision is it's not perfect vision. It's, it's dim. dim light. It's dim light. So everything that you can see is like shades of, you know. Gray. Gray, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You can make it all out, but it's not super clear. So you jump down in. Mm -hmm. Jump down in. Your feet touch the ground, and you are right outside your old room. From what I detected from the hole, was there any movement? There was no movement with what you detected. Okay. I think I go over. Is is like, it's not a door. No, it's just an archway. Yeah. I think I go over and peek in. Peek into your old room? Mm -hmm. Uh You go in there, and yeah, the whole thing, it's it's been ransacked by... You can assume scrapers over the years. Mm -hmm. Maybe even rummagers have come through since. Who knows? But the cushion that you you pulled into this room next to that big window is still mm -hmm. there. The window's still intact. And I would say there's even kind of like a rotten pile of fish bones in the corner. <laughs> and then uh, and you get kind of like that memory that you've yeah. taken a nap right before that wild magic storm hit. And everything went to chaos. <laughs> but where, then you met Gunther and you became a rummager and yeah, that kind of thing. Double-edged sword. Yep. So... There's nothing really in here. It's a showroom. It's a showroom. There wasn't much going on in this room. Yeah. I think I I leave the room. Okay. And... So you step out into the rest of the bedroom uh, areas. You remember your pathway from your memory, right? Yeah. You had to go through the bedroom, showroom area, and then start making your way into the bathroom section. You could get to the escalator, through the cafeteria, all that same sort of thing. You remember where to go. But this time, you are not a cat. You are Kia the Tabaxi. And I am bigger. Much. <laughs> and so I think I um 
I kind of fast walk through. Okay. And I, but I think I scan, I scan the beams that I know are above. I scan the rooms, looking for movement, glowy purple shells, mm-hmm. and goo. Okay. <laughs> uh, we'll say that you pass through the bedroom thing. On the very end, you see uh, you <laughs> see the remnants of an old scraper, tiny scraper <laughs> that you remember seven years ago. You pounced on and knocked off a wall. Oh. Uh, you make it through the first double set of doors, and you see. In front of the bathroom doors is another scraper remnant with a rolled out toilet paper foot. <laughs> that, that it would eventually have run out. It would have run out. And yeah, you're getting the vibe as you start going through here that at least up here, nothing's really changed. Yeah. In, in terms of people coming through and stuff, it's definitely more rummage. There's more debris. You're having to step over rocks. You're having to step over pieces of ceiling that have fallen down. <laughs> There's that I hid vines behind. growing through. There's probably a tree sprouted up that wasn't there before. It's much more wild, wild seeming, yeah, and okay. taken over. I think I go through. I go through the bathroom section probably a little bit faster, and peer through the doors to the cafeteria. Okay, you peer through the doors. Now you can look up and you can see through the windows. Yeah, through those doors. You were too short back then. <laughs> you were tiny. You can see through, and you can see the room itself is. Covered in completely rotten yeah. now meatballs, little lumps, goo piles everywhere. But it looks like the entire room is covered in this. Oh. So for like years after this or whatever, that machinery kept doing its thing. <laughs> and so. And is it, does it still seem to be meatballs left in the supposedly working freezer or? You can't tell by just looking through the door. Okay. There's no other ways you have to go through the cafeteria of yep. deadly meatballs. Yep. Okay. I go. I push it open. You push the door open. You take a step through. Your foot goes squelch. Yeah. And you're just... Is, it, is there no clear patches of floor? There's no clear patches yeah. of floor. And so you start squelching Ew. your way through the cafeteria. You peek around that little wall that you started and the booths are there. And you can see that they're, what the remnants of a meatball creature uh, are just destroyed oh. on the counter that was there like seven it years ago. So apart or No, and you do see now that you kind of get past this point, there there is a pathway that was cleared through the meatballs, but it comes from the escalator up. Oh. Like a rummager came through here. And probably and destroyed it. Okay. Can I hop over to the pathway? Yeah, you hop over to the pathway. And uh, you're peering over at the the guy. Go ahead and make an investigation check or a perception check for me. Mm. Perception is better. Nine. Um, nine. Okay. Uh, you don't see anything specifically interesting. You just see that it is totally and utterly beat up. Okay. I think I, I hop over to the path and start probably start a little faster going. I probably start like jogging. I think, down the path to the escalator. Okay, so you jog over the the path, and you can see, yeah, there was a cleared-out section. There's stuff torn up. It's all pretty well beat up. You get to the top of the escalator, and you are able to see down uh, to the front door area. Mm -hmm. Now, this is different in how you got out originally. Originally, you went down the escalator, and you went through this warehouse. Yeah. Right? So there are two exits here. You get a flashback. To your flashback. <laughs> flashback Looking down, flashback. and you were able to see a bunch of things out in the storm, right? Yeah. And so you avoided that area, and you went to the warehouse. Right now, there's nothing out there. It's there's just a, the bugs. No, there's you don't see the bugs here, because they're over by the warehouse door by where the lamp was. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Right? So I could go out the front door? You could go out this door, or you could go the same path that you took as a cat. Okay. You go down the escalator, and you can see, probably through the opening doorways... Because those two doors both went out the same side of the mm-hmm. building. You can probably see a string in the distance with a, with a clock on it. And I think now that you're down on that lower floor, you can probably see the bugs, you know, kind of off to the side a little bit. But you can see them. There are two ways okay. to kind of handle doing this. And I just want to give you the options. Okay. I think, is the door to the warehouse open? It was, yeah. It, or, it was or it is? Well, it is, yeah. Okay. 
I think she, for nostalgia's and role playing's sake, I think she'd uh, go go peek in to the door, and uh, see how full the pond is still with goldfish, or if they all. Uh... <laughs> yeah, we'll say you go into the warehouse. You're gonna have to go in a little bit. Yeah. To see, and you go in, and it's just chaos. The shelves. You remember ha- this happening? Yeah. The shelves knocked down, boxes strewn everywhere, and there were you know you were attacked by. Um, whatchamacallits? Scrapers. Scrapers everywhere, right? Yeah. This place is just torn up. and But the creek is still running through. But interestingly, I'll say that there's there's probably a couple more trees in here. Oh. And you look up and there's a squirrel in one of them <laughs> with some babies. <gasps> Aww. <laughs> it's a squirrel. And you're able to see into the pond. And yeah, there's there's more fish than ever. Uh, the pond's There's been, no cat. No cat them. in here to, to eat them, so <laughs> the fish have thrived, and um, and you are able to kind of see now from this angle too, down through the warehouse to those big oops, down through the warehouse to those big garage door mm-hmm. openings, that access would be to go outside. I think she would, um, chittering slightly at the squirrel. And actually, before <laughs> you do anything. As you come around the corner and look at the pond and look towards the outside, mm-hmm. you can see that there are some surge scarabs, probably 120 feet away, that are leaving this section and going out towards the stench clock, too. Oh. So they're all, like... Mm-hmm. They're cautiously. It's not It's not excitement or aggression, but they're there, yeah. Okay. I think giving a glare to the squirrel... Mm-hmm. It and- gives you a glare back. <laughs> In acknowledgement. <laughs> and I think I back I back out of the warehouse okay. and go over to the side room. Okay. Is the door still open so, or has it been changed? So you make your way out towards that side room. And that side room was kind of in between the main entrance and the warehouse, right? Yeah. I prowl. You prowl. <laughs> go ahead and make me a stealth check, please. The lowest possible roll. What's that? A six. As in a nat one. So a six, yes, but a natural one. I just want to reiterate that. Yes. Wow. How to resolve. You go, you peek, you look there. You remember, not just from the flashback from a couple days ago. You were right here. Mm -hmm. You see that side door and you're starting to get that pull again, right? That feeling that there is indeed that lamp is still there for sure. You feel that pull in that direction. Is the door open or closed? Has it has the has the door been closed slash changed? As you peek around and see, the door has not been closed. Okay. And the light that was on is off. But it's still pulling. Yeah. The uh, the well, magic the, is there regardless. Yeah. And it's nighttime. Mm-hmm. And the light is off. Mm. And as you are thinking to yourself and humming and <laughs> trying to make that thought. You start moving forward and you lean up against one of the old sliding doors that's there. And oh. it's not attached very well anymore. And Uh-oh. the whole door makes a thunk and it drops out of the track that was above. Mm. And the whole glass door falls forward onto the concrete, hits, and shatters. Mm. And suddenly, your net one <laughs> <laughs> stealth roll is a bad situation. I would like you to roll initiative, I think. The bugs aren't even in the room yet. The, but they heard that. Nine? <laughs> Barely beat my bugs. Yes. I got an eight. So you're going to go first. Mm. I'm just kind of winging this a little bit, but they they know something's up. And while they were moving slow towards the clock, something's going on now. And I think you even hear Beryl probably yell, Kia! Kia! Uh, you all right? Let's say that. Let's say that. (laughs) All right. I'm all right for now. Okay, okay. And but you get to go first. You are 20 feet from the lamp, and you're 100 feet from the ship. I'm gonna, I'm gonna dash. I'm gonna go the 20 feet to the lamp, then 40 feet out the door, hopefully to the outside. So we're gonna resolve that partially because you make the dash. You lean over. You grab the lamp. The lamp, as you grab it. Feels like magic. Feels that same feeling you got when you grabbed the unicorn. Mm -hmm. That same feeling when you got when you grabbed the projector 
all back then. Yeah. The Opticon and the Magicorn, as I've liked to call them now. Opticon and yeah, the Magicorn? The Opticon and the Magicorn. Wow. Uh, you pick up the lamp and you get this huge feeling of of energy, of, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And you pick it up and there's no cord attached or anything, but yeah. there's that button there. And it's one of those lamps that has an arm that comes up and a hood and it points forward like mm-hmm. a lantern that way, okay? Yeah. You pick it up. And you go to make your dash. You come mm. around that corner, and you now come around and get to the end of your original movement, which is 40 feet, right? Uh, my original movement is 30 feet. 30 feet. So we'll say you get to the end of your 30 feet, 20 feet to the lamp, 10 feet around the corner. Mm. Before you make your dash move, you get around that corner, and you see nine surge scarabs between you and the ship. They came around? They were outside the stench clock. Oh, yeah. you got to get to the ship if that's if that's what you meant. Did you mean go to the ship? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You come around the corner. So I'm just telling you, before you use your action, there are obstacles in your way. They, they heard me- that. It's not even their turn yet. No, no, no. They're, they haven't gone. Oh, oh. But getting to the ship, they were all huddle, huddled around the base of the ship, yeah. essentially. <laughs> so think about that accordingly before you use your dash action. I'm just going to be really mean to these bugs. By all means. And make it really, really hard to hit me. Okay. So that shield added two to my AC. It did indeed. I'm going to be even meaner and make it even more hard to hit them by putting on my golden watch for speed, which gives them disadvantage on hitting me. Nice. So you, it's on already, but you activate your yeah, use of the day, right? <laughs> and uh, you activate it, and suddenly you go into a blur. Yeah. Just like you have before. You have your two AC. You also have a dash action, and I believe you have a cat feature if you want to use it. It's that's only not moving though. No, there's a there's a movement feature. Yeah, if yeah. You get down on all fours. Uh, it says when you move on your turn in combat, you can double your speed until the end of the turn. Once used, you can't use this trait again until you move zero feet on one of your turns. So. You Wait, can. would I be able to move 90 feet yeah, then if would. I dashed? Yep, that's what I'm getting at. Oh, wow. I might do that. Okay, <laughs> I figured you might. So, you activate the speed watch, you have your extra teleconnect shield, and you get down on all fours and ready to sprint. You describe what happens um, as, as cinematically as you want, and I'm going, to, I'm going to say to get to the ship, you will probably need to dodge... I'm going to roll a d10. Mm-hmm. However, whatever I land on is how many things you're going to have to dodge. Okay. From these guys. Four. Okay. That's pretty good. So four attacks of opportunity will happen as you move through. Okay. But you have plus two to AC and, and disadvantage. They, and they have disadvantage okay. on hitting me. Describe it, and then periodically we're going to have you get attacked. Okay. I think I get down on all fours. I probably um do you think uh do you think the stem is like thin enough to fit in my mouth? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I think I grab it in my mouth because I'm using my hands to mm-hmm. help. And then I um dash forward, jump over the glass that shattered, um, and probably like turn and skid. Because cats, cats often skid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh turn and skid, making little skittery sounds with my claws and then go. Okay, at so at that first skid, yeah, you get a little too close to one of the scarabs as you make your first slide to a stop, mm-hmm. and it's going to make an attack at disadvantage at you. Well, that was unfortunate because the first roll that I rolled was a 19, Ooh, that and then the second hit. with disadvantage was a 1. Ah. Mm-hmm. So you go to skid, and it's coming rushing towards you, and you skid to a stop, and it skids trying to stop, and it just skids right past you <laughs> and goes crumpling into the glass door. <laughs> Continue. Okay. Uh, seeing that go by, she's like adrenaline pumping. She goes, she um, dashes forward, uh, like trying to pump as much energy into this as possible and uh, and tries to, uh, she's outside now, right? Yeah, yeah. You're in the parking lot. Yeah. Uh, she's trying to like dig your claws into little c- cracks and crevices that are here, trying to push herself forward as much as possible. Probably bouncing off a couple of. Uh... Are there any cars here? 
There were, I think there were a couple cars I mentioned, but nothing. It was pretty empty. Yeah, probably bouncing off like a car or something. Okay. We'll say as you bounce off this car, uh, a surge scarab comes out from underneath it and swipes at your feet. And uh, whether or not it hits you will depend. Oh, my goodness. I don't even need to re-roll. I just rolled a two. <laughs> um, goes to slash at you. You're too fast. You go mm-hmm. over the car. Ha. Okay. Yeah. As Before you do the two more, Barrel goes, Kia, I got you. And you hear this boom from her cannon up at the ship. And she fires it down at the couple scarabs mm. that were behind you. And we'll say part of the reason that only four are attacking you mm. is she blasts into like four of them <laughs> that were off to the side. And uh, they just get disappeared into arcane gooey mist. <laughs> She she uh, atomized them. <laughs> she atomized them. All right, continue. <laughs> okay, I think you got two more attacks that are coming your way. So I I um I uh, I go across the parking lot, looking back behind me, and being like, "So that's what they look like when they're gas." And um and go. Uh, was there? A, there's a wall around this parking lot, right? Yeah, but I mean, it was further away than the ship. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I I think she probably she just probably runs in a straight line. Maybe she zigzags a little bit. Mm-hmm. There's two more scrapers in your way that you're gonna have to dodge. Okay, she probably zigzags a little bit, uh, like dodging uh, cars and plants and stuff that I'm assuming is in yeah, this yeah, po- there's bushes parking growing lot. and stuff. And uh, we'll say you you dodge over the top of one of the bushes, and from inside the bush, one of the surge scarabs left out. It was trying to sneak it, sneak up on you. And is going to make a bite attack towards you. What'd you get? Uh, twelve. Not with what you've got right nope. now. It did okay, but wouldn't have hit me anyway. Yeah, it goes to bite you. Hits hits you. The teeth come down right around your tail, and then an invisible force causes them to not go <laughs> down and. Flibit's telekinetic shield <laughs> deflects that one, and the thing grabs onto nothing, and then as you run, it goes <laughs> holding onto your tail through the tene- telekinetic shield and just gets launched backwards. <laughs> That's funny. There okay. is one more, and it actually is holding on to the stench clock. It managed to get up high enough, barrel got distracted, and it is on the enchanted string. The ship is 50 feet up. <laughs> And it is sitting there, and it turns its little body. One of its arms is wrapped around the enchanted string, turns its body, and makes a hiss at you with its purpley, glowy fangs. <laughs> I, um, actually, I am a cat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> I think I rush over. What? How hard would it be for me to tackle this guy on the string? Tackle him... Like, so that he was no longer on the string? Yeah. I mean, it's a string. Opposed strength, <laughs> like a grapple check, essentially. Yeah. yeah. So, I'll tell you now, they don't have a ton of strength. A saving throw or a It would be check. checks. It would be checks. And we would be rolling against each other. Let's hope I don't roll one. Okay. I did not roll well. Seven. I got a six. Yes! Wow. <laughs> uh, I so, I will say that it's strength. not graceful. Yeah. But you go and you reach out and you jump and attack. And you are able to grab, grapple, and knock this guy off of the enchanted ball of yarn. But I will say this is the last attack coming your way. Okay. As you do that, you close into melee. It is going to try to attack you. Does a 16 hit? With the shield, no. Oh, man. My AC is 17, 17. currently. Flip it goes, ha it worked <laughs> from up above. As you see a glow of energy deflect and the shield dissipates. Uh, you are able to stand back up the scraper or the scarab down at your feet. What do you want to do? Hmm. I think I'd probably just leave it. I think I'd dodge it. Maybe I um, do the cat bat thing where they go and... I think paw it menacingly the cat bat thing and go Hoo-cha! there you go at him right. and then pushes him away sideways and then jump off and grab onto the string grab onto the string <laughs> only I'm, I can cut it I was gonna say only you can cut it so in my opinion that means it's very strong yeah maybe you plant your feet on the clock yeah <laughs> as like a foothold and barrel goes I got you and you start getting winched up <laughs> as she rolls the enchanted ball back up 
And you get up there, and all the surge scarabs start pooling around underneath the ship. There's there's no way they can reach you. Yeah. I will say that as you are climbing up and you grab and your feet are on the stench clock, the lamp that's in your mouth, mm-hmm. the head of the lamp starts on its own pointing down towards the stench clock. Uh. And then after a minute, points towards your wristwatch. And after a minute, points towards some... Some of the gear that you loaded into the cart with barrel stuff as you are getting pulled up. It's, uh, I, I look at it as, as like, probably cross-eyed because it's in my mouth. Mm-hmm. And go, like, and think in my head because I can't talk mm-hmm. with a lamp in my you're mouth. you drooling with a metal lamp <laughs> in your mouth. I, um, I, th- I probably think to myself, I probably don't want to turn this on right now, but this is cool. Yeah, it is cool. And uh, you find yourself back up in the balloon. Beryl leans over and she pats you on the back. She goes, good work, kid. Thanks. I say. What? I have a lamp in my mouth. Oh. <laughs> could take it out. But I, I, think I, I think I'd probably take it out and say, thanks. And, uh, and she goes, well, if you want the honors, I got one more loaded in the barrel. Sure. Barrel's barrel. Barrel's barrel. And uh, all the surge scarabs are down below. Go ahead and make an attack roll with a plus four. Uh, as wow, that's a powerful cannon with a plus four. I'll say she gives you advantage. Okay. Because she shows you how. Yeah, uh, sixteen. <laughs> sixteen. You better than a she, five. <laughs> she leans over. She saw you were like holding the wrong handle. And she <laughs> goes, ah, ah, that's the handle right there, and you want to squeeze this thing, and so you aim it down and you squeeze the trigger, and it goes. Boom, and a thing goes down, and just explosion of surge scarab purple goo. <laughs> Woo! As you guys grab the lamp and continue on your way. I think, can I hold it so it doesn't point at anything? Mm-hmm. I want to turn it on. So you hold it, and you point it at stuff, and you turn it on, and as you turn it on, it the beam is insane. The oh. beam is like a lighthouse. <laughs> it is really, really far. And you can see super, super far out in that direction, right? Mm-hmm. And I think interestingly is as you were holding it, it was probably pointing down at the stench clock. It was pointing back at the gear. Yeah. As you twist it and turn it on, it was like starting to turn back towards you. It turns its head on its own. Oh. It's automatically focused towards magical items. Yeah. You can figure that out really easily. But as you point it out and turn it on, it <laughs> focuses straight and narrowly and points towards the west. Mm. And Beryl looks at it and looks at the beam and she goes, I mean, I don't know why, but that's pointing like directly to Map's Edge. The Surge's artifacts. Maybe. That's where we put him. Okay. Well, let's get going. I and turn it off again in case it does something. Yeah, you turn it <laughs> off and it starts pointing back towards other things. I'll say you guys go for another two hours. Is there anything you want to do with watch, with sleep, with conversation. Oh, I deactivate wanna, the watch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to talk to Beryl about any other things? Now is the time. Mm. She, I will say she probably is going to say, we'll get to Map's Edge, and then if we split up, we can cover ground. Just in case Maud didn't go to Athon. Um, I'll hit up Harwick and uh, we won't have a way to communicate anymore, which is unfortunate, but why don't we just plan on, I'll be in, uh, in Wander Wharf probably take me about a week to get there. Okay. I'll stay there for two weeks. Okay. And I'll I'll try to be there as soon as possible. And if I don't Athon. see you by then, I'll come to Athon. Okay. Uh. Okay. Sounds sounds good. Okay. So she talks about that. Is the is the lamp just like continuously like pointing? I would say it's pointing at the most powerful amount of password tech, mm-hmm. which in this case, in pro- close proximity, would probably be all of her gear. Ah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. I think I probably just... Just to view behind the screens a little bit, too. This is called the Beaconator. <laughs> the Beaconator? <laughs> Sounds like you're about to cook bacon. Exactly. The Baconator. <laughs> okay. So, is there anything you want to talk to her about at all? No. Uh, any things about Maud, about the plan, anything? Nah, I think I'm okay. good. Okay. What about Flibbit? Flibbit. I say, you know... I was going to have systems in place for you to be safe. I believe you wholeheartedly... I just think that you like to forget about the fact that I'm terrified of everything. Uh, well, okay, fine, I do. <laughs> but, I mean, 
I'm just saying, in the future, I don't want to be bait. Okay. I don't mind helping, but I don't want to be bait. I reach out my hand to shake his tentacle, I guess. He reaches out his hand and shake his tentacle, and he goes, but that, that delicate egg shield, that was pretty cool, right? It was. That was great. I just learned that. I just figured that one out. Cool. And so, and yeah, all of his powers come from his, like, mental energy. Wait. With his blades. Um, <laughs> with his wains? Boins. <laughs> B-W-A-I-N-S. Wow. Yep. Um. Okay, so you go to sleep. You can take a long rest if you need it. And uh, you can... Oh, 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 no, I was just waiting for you to finish. Oh, <laughs> you were just staring at me very blankly. <laughs> I was like, did I say something that was confusing? No. <laughs> you can take a long rest. You wake up in the morning, Beryl kicks you awake, and she goes, all right, kid, let's get going. And uh, throws a breakfast bar at you. Breakfast bar? Oh, wait, Homemade. does she have? Oh, okay. Homemade. I was like, uh, does she some buy cliff bars somewhere? <laughs> They're called barrel bars. <laughs> she makes them herself. Uh, they're very high in protein ah. and questionable, questionable chemicals. <laughs> um, she, you guys get back on the ship and, uh, and you start heading towards Map's Edge. I think on the way she's going to say a couple things about, you know, she'll tell you about Harwick and when he left the game to get into politics. You know, he's, he's a good guy. He's a mayor. He's a gnome. Oh. And, uh, he's the mayor of Wander Wharf. Uh... She's going to, she talks to you a little bit about, you know, some of the stuff they got into, rummagers, Mm -hmm. other things, times they didn't mesh well with the bloodhounds, (laughs) you know, stuff like that. Other problems she's caused. You get the vibe that Beryl's had to move around a lot. Uh, Her lab's always been in Briarport, but she doesn't stay in one place very long. Yeah. Um, She's going to talk about Athon a little bit too. She leans back and she goes, okay, now. I will tell you one thing. If, if you're heading to Athon, um, we got a contact there that could help you out. She's actually one of the one of the ones in charge. Who? Really nice lady. Uh, she's an elf. Uh, her name's Calvatia. And uh, so when you get there, you're going to want to find her. Okay. She's one of the bog witches. Oh. And those are? Oh, Athon's run by like a council of bog witches. The oh. whole city is surrounded by this boot stealer bog. And so, but they grow a bunch of flowers there. I actually use a lot of them for some of my creations. Ah. They're good for that kind of thing. Anyway, find her. She might not know anything, but she'll be able to help you out in town. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Um. This will possibly be a character in the future where we might have guests. Yeah, we've already, they've already met this guest, but she might come back. Yeah. Seven years later. Seven years later? Or it wasn't seven years later. No, it wasn't. It was a couple of years ago, though. Oh, 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 in the podcast. I was like... The story, not <laughs> actual. <laughs> like, huh? It was a couple months ago, <laughs> but the story. Um, and, uh, and you guys start sailing along in the sky. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Sun's out. Clouds. <laughs> I think. <laughs> As you say that, you're not far off, but it's a little different than you expect. You start sailing, 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 and you're low on the trees. You're not up Mm -hmm. high, so it's harder for you guys to see distant. You've been staying really low. Well, you finally kind of crest over those hills. You you get past retail ruins, and you're in in those rolling hills. You probably even see that house where you got (laughs) your honey from. Ah. And the scraper down there, right? The mystery honey. (laughs) Yeah, and so you start coming through these hills, and then you go through some more trees, and you're starting to get back into that plains territory. Yeah. That wide land where... Maps edges. You sail along, and it's clear sky, beautiful. You can even see Maps Edge, but it's you know it's an hour or two away. Yeah. As you're going along, you suddenly feel something. Feel a surge, kind of like when you feel the lamp next to you. You feel that surge Mm -hmm. pull into you. You feel a big pull, a split second towards Maps Edge, and then the lamp that you're holding that's next to you that was looking at Beryl's stuff yeah. starts looking towards map's edge and then starts spinning in circles like and it can't spinning decide in circles like it can't decide like it can't decide like something's wrong oh and Beryl goes uh that's bad that's bad and you guys look towards map's edge and there's a small little beam that shoots out the top of this tower 
Oh, no. And suddenly, boom, like it appears out of nowhere. There is a wild magic storm above the town. I pull out my rocky talkie. Pull out your rocky talkie. It's reset. It is reset. I press the Theodora button. You press the button. (laughs) As you press the button, you hear... I'm assuming your experiment didn't go as planned. Is that Kia? Yes. Kia, are you nearby? I'm about an hour away. I can see the storm. It's... We got a problem. Uh, We got a big problem. I can see that. She hangs up on you. Turn the thing Hmm? off. She hangs up on you. Oh. There's too much chaos. And you start sailing towards this wild magic storm that just, boof, come up. Barrel kicks it into high gear. Mm -hmm. You guys start flying, disregarding the height thing anymore. She drops a little bit of the ballast. You guys pick up a little bit and you gain some speed, closing that gap. You see as the storm starts growing and growing and growing over the tops of Map's Edge. She hands you a spyglass. Make a perception check. Uh, 14. 14. You look and you see, you see through into Map's Edge. Mm -hmm. No one's making their way towards the scrape. The storm is there. No, but nobody's coming out. No one's coming out. And then about that time, it gets too cloudy. It gets too rainy. You can't quite see into Map's Edge anymore. Nobody's coming out. Wait, Theodore hung up on me. She did. Does it, did it sound like there were lots of people? Like, Mm, make an investigation check. Six. Nope, you don't. You just heard her voice and it seemed like she was preoccupied. Okay. Um, how, with this, with this sped up pace, how long do you think, or how long do I think it would take? I think you probably have about a half hour. And as you get closer and as you get closer, the storm's not moving. It has in the past. Oh. Stuck over the top. Is the beam still going? Of Map's Edge. The beam is still going. I told her to turn it off. (laughs) She hung up on you. I... So, you run into a situation right now in this moment where you guys, half hour goes by and Beryl starts going around the edges of the storm. She goes, I don't know, can, I don't know if we can go in there. Uh, Do we? Yeah, if you want to stay here, you can stay here. I'm going in there. Make a persuasion check, because that was, she's a ex-pirate. Yeah. Persuasion? With advantage. Oh. What'd you get? Ooh! Ah. I rolled advantage anyway because it could have been better by one, and it got better by one. What'd you get? I got a 20. You got Natural a Natural 20. 20. <laughs> Barrel goes, Oh, kid, I like your style. She kicks open a side hatch, and she pulls out a uh, tricorn hat. <laughs> That she hasn't worn in a long time, and she puts it on her head. I love that it's just a hat in a hatch. Yeah, she, like. she's a pirate on occasion. <laughs> and she goes, well, this should be interesting. <laughs> and she turns the ship, and you guys head in to the Wild Magic Store and flip it, holding on to something going, Aah. Even though we're not probably like not moving very... No. Uh... You're moving quickly enough. Yeah. You guys head in, and you can finally start seeing down into Map's edge, right? Yeah. You start descending, you start descending, you see that beam, you see it, it is coming out of the top of Theodora's tower, right? Mm-hmm. The town below, what you see is you start seeing blinks of light, boof, 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 all over the town. You see these little blinks of green, purple, red, blue, white, mm-hmm. all these lights, you see flashes happening. It's hard to get through, it's hard to see. You guys descend, 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 and you start seeing rainfall come down again. Yeah. Multicolored rainfall. You haven't had to do this in a while. Mm-hmm. I need you to roll as you start descending down towards the ground on the wild magic table. Please roll a D100. And this time, I'm going to have you... I didn't have you do this the last time you did this. I actually do need you to roll it for Flibbit and Beryl as well. Oh, okay. 17... A 17. So this is for you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> Let, uh, I'm scared. Hang on. Hang on. I want to resolve everyone's first. 
before I tell you what you got. Okay, uh, I'll roll for barrel. You roll for flippant. Mm-hmm. Whoops. Um, if you get over a hundred, it goes back to one. If it's a if it's a one hundred and then a number. Yeah. Then it's um. Okay. I got. Or it's whatever you got. It's a zero one. Okay, I got a six. A six for flippant. Okay, um, for flippant, uh, it uh, he is screaming. And he's going, ah! and then li- a literal dog <laughs> falls out of the sky and almost hits Flippin. It's raining cats and, and dogs. And then a cat falls out of the sky. <laughs> and they're going, meow. And, <laughs> and it's raining literal cats and dogs. Flippin needs to make a dexterity saving throw or be hit by a dog. <laughs> so do that real quick. Uh, okay. Uh, what's his dex? Uh, plus two. Um, an 18. Okay, yeah. So he's able to dodge. The dog falls down to the ground. And disappears into a puff of magic. <laughs> it's only there for the rainfall. Oh. Uh, and then uh, Beryl got a 57. Uh, Beryl suddenly sprouts two giant rabbit ears on top of her head that peek through the hat, um, giving her perception on, uh, or advantage on perception checks, and they last for 24 hours. Wow. She goes, ah! <laughs> She's like, this is crazy! All right, and you can... <laughs> Okay. I'm scared. I'm scared. You feel something inside your stomach. You feel something inside your belly. Uh, is it the pull from the surged item? Is it the is it the magic storm? Uh oh. Is it, what what is that? What is what is going on? I go to the rail. You go to the rail and you lean over and then you fart. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was gonna puke. Nope. You suddenly have the intense urge to Pass gas. In fact, <laughs> so does everyone in the storm. <laughs> Farts galore. And maybe to undercut this slightly intense moment, <laughs> you start passing a lot of gas. Hmm. And you please <laughs> roll for me a perception check. Uh, and flip it, I think, with his stench spray. Uh-oh. Uh, he doesn't notice the farts <laughs> happening. But everybody else is like, oh, oh Barrel's like, oh, boy. Maybe we shouldn't eat in Barrel's breakfast <laughs> bar this morning. A too many suspicious chemicals. Yeah. Um, a perception? Yes, please, and thank you. 18. 18. You notice as you guys are finally starting to descend, and you're almost there, there is the beam of light mm-hmm. finally whoosh, winks out. Oh. The storm dissipates. The sky clear again. You see in the distance with the 18, you see something... You see a vehicle rolling out to the west in the distance. Going out? Out of Map's Edge, moving along. Pretty far off. It's something you couldn't see it before, but with the 18 you can. Mm-hmm. And you see wagon wheel style tracks. Similar to like Theodora's steam powered cart. Mm-hmm. You see something that is escaping Map's Edge to the west. And it looks like a bigger vehicle. A bigger vehicle. I think I... Keep in mind that I ha- that I might eventually, depending on how Gunther is and everything, I might eventually be able to catch up to that said vehicle. I think I put it out of my mind for now. Mm-hmm. Um, the storm dissipates, and I'm so farting. You're still farting, yep. You hop out of the, the balloon. Mm-hmm. You fart one more time. <laughs> and then it starts to disappear. And you start, we're going to cut into cinematic here, you start running for town. Right, Mm -hmm. You start running towards the tower where Theodora was. As you burst in through the door to the tower, you see Theodora there, all alone. No one else around. She looks haggard. Her hair is all pulled out of buns. She is sweaty. She is bruised. And she looks up at you, and she's got tears in her eyes. What happened? And all she says is, Zar blood of and that's where we <laughs> end our session for this week we're at an hour no. and you'll have to figure it out from there <laughs> okay that was exciting that was fun you farted a bunch <laughs> barrel's got bunny ears flibbit uh almost got hit by a dog <laughs> Flippet was like the least worst of all yeah, of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was good. I don't know. The bunny ears are useful. It's yeah. Perception check advantage. 
All right. Well, that was all for this week. We will continue on more cliffhangers and excitement to figure out what's going on, what happened to Map's Edge. And if I get a moto wheeler. And you get a moto wheeler. And go. And I will say, as you peek around, I should probably say this before we go anywhere. As you peek around Does and Theodore see. Fart. <laughs> yeah, Theodora doesn't. She says Zar Bloodhoof, right? Mm -hmm. And you look out towards that cart once more and you see it zooming away. And then your eyes scan across town. All the doors are open. All everything's open. And you start it really starts to settle in that when she walked in, she said Blo Zar Bloodhoof, and you only saw her, you look out and you see there is no one in town. And, and there is a big vehicle in the distance? There's a big vehicle in the distance. And you get the sense. Actually, ooh, 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 before we finish, can you please go to your features and traits as uh, a Horizon Walker and tell me what features and traits you have? All of them? Starting at the top. Okay. Just the titles. Uh, favored enemy is Constructs. Uh, natural Explorer, Underdark, slash Ruins. Um, me. I'm looking for of your class, your subclass. Yeah, Ranger... Ranger Archetype, Horizon Walker. Removal Awareness. Uh, Horizon Walker Magic. Protection from evil and good. Detect. Oh! What do you got there? Detect Portal. Detect Portal. Now, that's something that you just got. And it's Third not level. something that's come up before. And I think it's not something that you've ever experienced before. But how does it work? It says, at third level, which I'm fourth level... You gain the ability to magically sense the presence of a planner portal. Portal. As an action, you detect the distance and direction to the closest planner portal within one mile of you. And that's it. As you can I do it? Yep. As you come down, you start looking out from Theodora's tower, and you start seeing this disappearance of people. There's no one mm -hmm. here. And I think, interestingly, I think Flibbit is able to pick up on this too. He yeah. came through a portal originally. And you are feeling a different kind of sensation. Something, you know, it's not in your chest. It's not that pull of past world tech. Mm -hmm. It's it's something else. It's something in your training. It's something in this horizon walker, this this ability. Maybe it was the interaction with Flibbit. Who knows? Yeah. Your wild magic abilities. You hone in on a nearby location and you can see this faint little mist almost like celestial like a galaxy how you can see that like mm -hmm. cloud of stars you see this faint little mist and you go over and you run your hand through it and you can sense that there was a portal here and you start scanning through town and you can see that there were dozens of portals here the bl and you blinkies. get the sense that those blinky lights you saw were portals <laughs> and as you start feeling around in there you almost feel like you get a pull like you can almost just barely tell that the portal that you're touching its destination was somewhere to the north but it didn't go to another plane of existence it did not go Any to planer. another plane of existence it did however feel like it went somewhere to the north <gasps> and we'll pick the rest of that up I, I'm i just going to uh, for cinematic role playing sake please do turn to flip it and say, we have a problem. <laughs> uh, yes, we do. <laughs> and then he pats you on the head with a tentacle. <laughs> and that is where we'll end this week's episode of The Adventurous. More mysteries to solve next time. Mysterious minotaurs and... I don't magic. have another... Uh, mysterious minotaurs and magic. There you go. <laughs> um, thank you all for listening. Mysterious As magical always, minotaurs. <laughs> there you go. Mysterious magical minotaurs. As always, check us out, follow us, listen, etc., etc. We're having a great time. This has been fun. I would say we're, you know, I don't know. We're getting through the story. We're partway through, you know, act, act two. two. And I act think we're going to have act, act I think we'll go through act three. I don't know. Uh, the daughter's going to be doing the next campaign. We're excited. Anyway, thank you all for listening. And we'll see you next time on Mysteri Mysterious Minotaurs That's and Magic <laughs> and also Dad Adventurous. Beautiful. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.